Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Bands, Bands You, you Should, Should Know. Know. Today, we are going to be talking about a band that has a little bit of everything, depending on what you're into. Do you, do you like the thrash metal? Do you like the, the hard rock style? Do you like things a bit more progressive? Well, you're all in luck because this band has a little bit of all of that. Today, we're going to be talking about the band Wrathchild America. All right, a little bit of a bio. Wrathchild America began as Wrathchild in the late 70s. That's right. Once I read that, I went to go look it up in several places to see if that was actually correct, and apparently uh, it was. They started in the late 70s. And to back that up, the uh, bassist and vocalist of Wrathchild America actually played guitar on the second Kicks album, which came out in the early 80s. So. I guess there you go, confirms it right there. But uh, in the beginning, Wrathchild were uh, a little bit more of a straightforward, maybe even power metal-ish kind of band, and they only did demos in the early 80s. Uh, by the time they got to the late 80s, they had pretty much forged the sound that would uh, fill out their two full-length albums, where they sort of took from different elements like thrash metal and hard rock and progressive and kind of put it together in uh, their own sort of style. Now, they got signed to Atlantic Records and had to change their name from Wrathchild because there was already a band in the UK called Wrathchild. So they just added America at the end. Is it the best choice for the altering of a name? Not really, but at this point, it's history. It's uh, it's it's classic metal history. So we're talking about Wrathchild America. So uh, let's get into it. <laughs> So, what you just heard was a little bit of the track Climb in the Walls from the debut album from Wrathchild America, Climb in the Walls. And uh, this album came out in 1989. And um, it is a super enjoyable album. It, like I said, pulls from these sort of different areas of heavy music. So there are thrash metal elements on there, sure. Uh, there's a hard rock element that pops up here and there. To be honest, they kind of just do whatever the fuck they want. These guys don't have any kind of rule book that they were working off of. They would have a full-on thrasher followed by a really fun hard rock song and it just seemed appropriate. It doesn't seem like anything is out of place. It is just pure enjoyment and all of the different elements seem to work together perfectly. And also, these are not just one note, in and out, done kind of songs. These songs are pretty complex at times. They take you places and it's utterly enjoyable where these songs do take you. And on top of that, these guys are all skilled musicians all amazing performances, great guitar work, great songwriting. There's a lot of memorable, catchy parts to a lot of the songs. But like I said before, and I'm gonna drive this point home really fucking hard with this band, uh, there's not a repeating of a theme or a type of song. Um, sure, it all falls into the metal category, but you're not gonna get bored with the same shit over and over again. Let's uh, let's take a quick look at this uh, this album just because it's it's fucking great. We already already looked at the back covers. I love the fact that if you look at the pictures, especially that one right there, that's that's more of something that you would see like on a Skid Row album. And and honestly, I would say that fans of Skid Row would also enjoy this album. It seems like they fit really nicely in that area. Even the vocals, the vocalist, he, he has a style that could be perfectly fine on a Metallica album and also perfectly fine on a Skid Row album. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great for that period of rock music because I feel like they have a little bit for everyone. I feel like every fans of those bands could all get together 
and enjoy Wrathchild America. Um, let's take a look at the inner sleeve here really quick. So there you go. We got some lyrics, some lyrics and ready. Are you, are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? The collage. So uh, yeah, there you go. That is a that is a mega collage right there. Um, but uh, yeah, this album is um, super cool. There you go. There, there you go. The Atlantic. Oh shit! Ha <laughs> ha! The Atlantic Records logo. That's side two. Nothing. I mean, you know, pretty vanilla. But uh, to be honest, this kind of band being on a major label like this is pretty cool. And unfortunately, it also brings a lot of weight with it and a lot of expectations because. You get signed to a major label, especially in 1989. These motherfuckers are ready for you to put out a big ass, you know, million selling album. Unfortunately, this album, even though it did make a little bit of a dent and, and people did like it, it wasn't the breakout success that I guess maybe it should have been. Anyway, to uh, get across the idea of how varied the album is, let's listen to a clip from another track from this album called Silent Darkness. So you see what I'm saying? It's almost like there's something for everyone on this album. And I know some people out there might be like, hey, pick a style and stick with it. But really, there's a lot of bands that do that to their detriment. So I'm cool with Wrathchild America doing the shit they did because I totally love the albums that they put out. Speaking of that, let's move on to the second album that Wrathchild America put out. So what you just heard right there was a clip from the song 3D Man from the second Rothschild America album called 3D. Uh, this album, you may even be able to tell from the, uh, from the kind of artwork, it, it, it pushes the, the progressive element up a little bit. In fact, this album overall seems like the logical step up from climbing the walls. There's not huge differences here, but it's, it's like they kind of tightened up what they were doing while still broadening the scope of the kind of things that they did because there's a lot of odd time signatures there's even the song spy which is a full-on just rhythm and blues song and then later on they have an instrumental song which is almost like their version of an instrumental like rush you know the big rush instrumentals that were fucking amazing they kind of have their own version of that and uh it's just once again a fucking thoroughly enjoyable album with amazing performances. The production on this album is actually a little bit better than Climbing the Walls and it just, like a band should do, they just stepped up their game and put out a fucking killer album. Let's let, we'll look a little bit more. Here, here you go, here's the back. Here's, there's the dudes. Um, so yeah, 
Uh, let's take a look at the inner sleeve here. There you go. Some lyrics there on this side here, and then the other side. Some pictures of the dudes rocking out. I mean, that, that guy must be playing something crazy right there. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, um, they are really great musicians, and um, it totally shows on this album. Once again, you get this really vanilla-looking Atlantic Records release, uh, which I guess because the first album didn't really do that great, they're not going to fork over extra money for cool artistic labels, I guess. Or maybe that was just the Atlantic Records thing. There were some labels that were really picky about, like, we're just going to have our label on everything. Unless you were Michael Jackson or some shit and you could just get away with whatever you wanted. But anyway, um, these guys didn't become Michael Jackson. <laughs> In fact, this album did even worse than the first album did. But before we get there, let's listen to a clip of another song from this album. This song is called Surrounded by Idiots. <laughs> one was actually released uh, with a music video. Uh, they, they released one music video from the first one and two, I think two from this one. Um, didn't really help, but, but that's beside the point. This album is really fucking good and it, like I said, it expands on what they did before and it doesn't let you get too comfortable. There's a lot of shifts and unexpected turns in the songs. It's like they, they know exactly when to uh, make something a little more straightforward and, and heavy and they also know to not let you get too comfortable with anything and so it just makes it another utterly enjoyable album from a band that should have been fucking huge in my opinion i mean they had interesting yet accessible songs they had a really great thing going but I guess maybe it was the timing because they had so many thrash elements in there and I guess thrash was kind of on the way out and who knows what number of reasons could have added up to them not being successful, but at any rate, they ended up being dropped from Atlantic Records in 1992 and very abruptly, that's where the story of Wrathchild America ends. And then it kind of begins again because they ended up changing their name to Souls at Zero and they put out a couple of albums under that name and it's got a little more of a 90s metal kind of feel and it's way less uh, adventurous but still really fucking good shit. But that's for another video. Uh, we're talking about Wrathchild America. So as of right now, there's no activity in the Wrathchild America camp. Um, but if you go to like, you know, the metal archives online and other places, it seems to indicate that the band is active. And on the metal archives page, there's a picture of the, the band as old dudes. So apparently they got together and did something. But as far as I know, since about 2017, there hasn't been any activity online from the band. And so who knows what the fuck happened? Maybe they got back together to try to do something and it didn't end up working out. But Either way, um, the fact that they did it makes me pretty happy because maybe one day they will get back together. Maybe we'll get another Wrathchild America album because that is a band, as I'm doing the video here, that I think everyone should know because they, when it comes to all of those metal bands that were coming out around 1989, 1990, I really do think that Wrathchild America stood out from a lot of those bands and maybe their approach 
wasn't right for the time. Maybe they were a little bit ahead of their time and maybe, or maybe they just didn't connect with the audience that they should have connected with uh, because they didn't have enough publicity or whatever. I could go on, you know, trying to guess why they didn't make it, but the fact is they didn't. And that's fucking sad. But that's why I'm here to talk about bands like this one, Wrathchild America, a band you should know, and now you do. All right, so that's it for this edition of Bands You Should Know. Thank you for watching. Please comment down below, uh, like and subscribe and tell your friends, share this video all over the fucking place. And as usual, I will see you guys again very, very soon. Bye.